Welcome to VSU's IT Training and Communication Video Tutorial. Today's video clip will cover the basic Smart Classroom procedures. In this session, we will demonstrate how to power on the system, log in with Smart Classroom credentials, open X panel, power on and power off the projector, bring the projection screen up or down, use X panel to control your Smart Classroom, request technical assistance or report a problem, and power off the system. The first thing you'll want to do when entering your classroom is make sure the computer and symposium are powered on. They should be on by default, but in the event that they are not, you'll want to open the cabinet under the symposium and manually power on the computer by pressing the power button in the front. When on, the CPU should produce a steady green light. Regarding the symposium, the power button can be located either at the top or the side. Once found, you'll want to press this button to power on your Sympodium, which also functions as the monitor. At every instructor's workstation, login information should be posted on the desk for reference. This is the quickest way to log into the computer. However, you can use your AD or Active Directory credentials if you need to access your own documents, which will not be accessible from the Smart Classroom account. It is important to know that using your own login information may result in a longer sign-in process, as the computer needs time to pull up your settings and files. XPanel is the software that controls the Smart Classroom. Once you are logged into the computer, XPanel should come up automatically. If it does not, you will need to locate and double-click the XPanel icon on the desktop. The XPanel icon can be identified by three overlapping color boxes. After the XPanel software is initiated, click the Power On button and wait approximately 25 seconds for the system to fully power on. The screen will remain visible during this warm-up process. The system should turn on the projector and bring down the projection screen once it has been fully powered on. Since each classroom is unique, it is not uncommon for projectors to require a manual power on via remote or by pressing the power button on the actual projector. If there is a mini remote at the instructor's workstation, you will use that to control the projector. If there is no remote and XPanel does not turn on the projector, you will have to physically press the power button located at the bottom of the projector. Additionally, the projector screen may need to be activated with the wall switch to lower and raise. The screen switches can be identified as white triangles, one pointing up to send the screen up and one pointing down to bring the screen down. The oval stop button in the center pauses the movement of the projection screen. The screen wall switch is usually located next to the power switch controlling the classroom's lighting. However, this is not always the case because classrooms vary. For this reason, you will want to become familiar with the layout of each classroom you plan to use in order to become better prepared for your event or class. This is the main control screen you will be using to navigate the XPanel software. PC is the default source which displays the computer screen. Also, by default, the privacy function is disabled and the volume is left at 50%. When the privacy function is off, which is the default setting, the projected screen is visible by the audience. To enable the privacy function, click the on button. When on, the privacy function blackens the projected screen and prevents the audience from seeing what is on the computer screen. This function can be used if you are still in the process of preparing or have data on the computer that you do not wish to share with your audience. To disable the privacy function, click the off button. Please note that a free screen function is not available with the XPanel software. Master volume controls the system volume. The up button increases the volume, the down button decreases the volume, and the mute button silences the volume. If you are having trouble with the volume, and the master volume is not working properly, you may need to check the computer volume, which is located in the bottom right corner of your computer screen. Or, you may need to check the volume of the media player, such as the volume used to control sound from a YouTube video. For classrooms with microphones, the master volume also controls microphone volume. The DVD button switches the source to DVD and displays the DVD option menu. You will insert DVDs in the DVD player located underneath the instructor's workstation and use the DVD menu buttons to control the DVD player. 
The VHS button switches the source to VHS and displays the VHS option menu. You will insert tapes in the VHS player located underneath the instructor's workstation and use the VHS menu buttons to control the VHS player. You will want to keep in mind that not all classrooms have a VHS player. The laptop button switches the source to display the screen of any devices connected via VGA cable. This feature is only available in rooms with the VGA port. The aux button switches the source to auxiliary, which switches to any device connected via RCA cable. This feature is only available in rooms with RCA ports. Please note that classrooms do not typically have spare, VGA, RCA, or adapter cables so you should bring your own if you plan on using the laptop or auxiliary feature. Also, instructors should primarily rely on the PC source and reserve using laptop or auxiliary for demonstrations with software and applications that are not available on the classroom computer. Some rooms have a document camera which displays three-dimensional items or documents. X-Panel systems with document cameras will have a dock or dock cam button as a source option. The Help button provides several help options. In the event that a piece of equipment malfunctions in the middle of your lecture, you can click the Help button. If the issue directly affects your ability to proceed with your class or event, you should click the Technician Needed button. This immediately alerts and dispatches the technician. Please note, it may take 5 to 15 minutes before someone reaches your room. If you notice something that needs to be addressed, but doesn't prevent you from continuing with your planned event, you can report it by clicking one of the four options, DVD VCR, projector, sound, or other. This will allow a technician to troubleshoot and resolve the issue at a later point in time. Of course, you may also call the IT Help Desk directly at 229-245-4357. At the end of your session, power off by pressing the power off button on X panel. You may have to power off the projector manually. It is important that the projector is completely powered down to prevent the bulb from going out prematurely. Also, you will want to be sure to log off completely if you logged in with your AD or Active Directory account. If you fail to do so, the next user may have access to your files. Even though it is recommended you log off, please try to leave the actual computer on for the next person to use. Turning off the monitor is optional. Finally, be sure to collect any personal effects such as USB drives or DVDs. This concludes the basic Smart Classroom procedures. Thank you for watching VSU's IT Training and Communication video tutorial. For other video tutorials and guides, please visit our website at www.valdosta.edu/tc.